Welcome, everyone, to the first episode of Knights at a Roundish Table. Since this is our first episode, please give us some slack as we are still figuring some stuff out. Even so, I believe I have the perfect case for you today. There is intrigue, drama, and a body. Let's get stuck in. Today we'll be looking into the murder of Jean Townsend. This is an unsolved murder case from Rooslip in the county of Middlesex, England. Townsend was a 21-year-old English woman who was murdered in September 1954. Despite an extensive police investigation and the case being over 50 years old, no one has ever been charged with her murder and the case remains unsolved. The case shocked the people of Rooslip. Some local residents even went as far as organising patrols to escort women to and from the station late at night. Jean Marie Townsend lived with her parents at the family home in Benton Drive, South Rooslip, and worked as a theatrical costumer in London's West End. On the evening of the 14th of September 1954, she attended a social function in the West End, returning to South Rooslip later that night on the last Central Line train. At around 11.45pm she was seen leaving South Rooslip station, walking along Victoria Road alone. Her body was discovered the following morning on the waste ground to the north side of Victoria Road, which is now occupied by the St Gregory the Great Catholic Church. The autopsy report stated that she had been strangled with her own black silk scarf, and it was reported that, despite various items of her clothing being removed, there were no signs of sexual assault. That is pretty... it's just weird. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird definitely a weird case. Her. Found dead, I mean... strangled by her own scarf, is a pretty weird way to start the case. And also... Don't you need, like... Don't you need like, a lot of power to strangle somebody with a scarf? Or I suppose it depends speak? on this. I've never tried. <laughs> it doesn't. Speaking from personal oh. experience, very difficult. Um. I hope so. I, or I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I mean, she was also missing her clothes and, like, missing parts of her clothes, but there was no sexual assault or anything. That sounds that more really like a fetish. That, that sounds that like a fetish. Really She's been missing for a night. If if she had died after the sexual assault, there would be some signs, right? Um, yeah. And since there's only seven hours that she's unaccounted for, it, it sounds like she had a stalker that like was too scared to do anything, so he just killed her and took off her clothes. That's weird. I I I'm staying at the fetish theory. <laughs> oh God, you know. No, like I'm I'm serious. Maybe he doesn't want to say if he if he wasn't seriously interested in her body and just wanted to like do stuff to her clothes I guess because also sexual assault would leave some evidence after all so he can at least have some fun with the oh, clothes I guess it could just be like maybe she put up a fight there is some weird fixation on clothes isn't there she was strangled oh, with her own no. own scarf and also as we'll get into later her stockings and her shoe was missing so they well, taken. they were they were taken off, but they were found next. They were found next to her handbag. Oh, oh, oh okay. Okay. None of them were missing. None of the clothing items. No. It could be that she just put okay. up a struggle, maybe, and then it kind of whatever. Well, happened, we'll get into that during the inquest of the case. The coroner uh, expressed that apart from the obvious symptoms of asphyxiation, there were no signs of struggle, or that Townsend had physically resisted her attacker. Another young woman, Ellen Carlin, had been murdered in London earlier that very same month. Carlin was alleged to have worked as a prostitute in Pimlico and was strangled shortly after being seen with a man in a US Air Force uniform. Due to this, local suspicion fell on the American serviceman based at the nearby South Rooslip Air Station. The rumours of an American being involved intensified when a resident living near the scene reported hearing a woman cry for help late on the night of the murder, followed by two male voices arguing, one of which seemed to have an American accent. A number of women came forward to report being approached or accosted by strange men in and around the area where Jean's body had been found in the days preceding the murder. One of these, Jacqueline Cliff, told reporters how she had been approached repeatedly by a man, aged about 30 with a high forehead, 
spoke with an American accent and drove an American type car. Another young woman, Joan Gala, reported being attacked by a man late at night on Victoria Road on the Saturday before the murder. Her description of her attacker included the fact that he had a high forehead. Some three weeks after Jean Townsend's murder, Doris Vanell reported being followed and attacked by a man outside the North Harrow tube station, three miles from South Rooslip station. She was returning home just after midnight, and her attacker had boarded at Baker Street and sat watching her intently till following her off the train at North Harrow. Vanell challenged him and managed to get away, but only after a struggle during the course of which she had torn some buttons off her assailant's coat. Once again, the man was described as having a high forehead. Three years later, in 1957, a young mother called Muriel Maitland was brutally murdered in Cranford Woods near Heathrow Airport, just a few miles from Rooslip. It was reported that the police considered the possibility of a link with the Townsend case, but it seems nothing came of this. So we have two, maybe three killings and three assaults. Bear in mind these were all women of around the same age in their in their 20s to 30s well i had an idea yeah so like since it didn't seem like there was any struggle what if she was into it and perhaps there uh, was some choking uh, involved and then he accidentally uh, killed her and then he's like, like uh, oh. <laughs> they're in a wasteland though like <laughs> Yeah, where no one else can see them. Was it beside a church? I mean, no, a fair, church was erected at a later date. They could have uh, dropped the body. That's true. It could be, but then it would have been a bit weird to stage the clothes, like, to be nearby. I don't know. I'm not so sure I agree with the into it thing, but it, it is quite interesting that there was no resistance on her side from what we can make out because there's no other other than the asphyxiation there's no marks on her and yeah it's also know, weird that there was no sexual assault do we know if there uh, she was possibly intoxicated um i don't actually although she did come from a party hey okay possibly so if she and was a lot drunk, of women uh claimed that they were being approached by was it Two men or one man in specific? Uh, one man in specific. Described as having a high yes. forehead. High forehead. In fact, we do mean. actually have a um, a description of the man who supposedly killed or Ellen Carlin. Okay. Um, the police description of the man believed to be in the forces is aged twenty-two to twenty-four. 5 feet 8 or 9 inches, stocky build, flaxen hair, blue eyes and a baby face, clean shaven, wearing dove grey garbadine trousers, blue small check sports coat with patch pockets, and believed plain, plain back white shirt and olive and chai. Sorry that this was, that was a bit stuttered. It was, this is, this is the original um, newspaper reports. Oh, okay. so the issue with just that. Be... Did you just describe Peter Griffin? <laughs> no! <laughs> the issue with that description is it's very. Despite like it being a very good description, because he's in the armed forces, a lot of them are expected to be clean shaven, and most of them are going to be fairly tall, so that's a very. That description would match probably a lot of people in the area at the time yeah probably it's very basic plus the um the a white guy five eight five nine stocky build it's not that like nothing outstanding is it's except yeah, the forehead the... of course yeah i was gonna say other than the forehead yeah. everything about him is very basic and you know general even the victims are bullying him Oh, this dude had such a big forehead. Wow. <laughs> in October 1982, the Metropolitan Police announced that it was reviewing its files on the Townsend case following a number of anonymous telephone calls. The content of the calls has never been revealed and the caller's identity remains unknown. Police stated that they were very interested in what the caller told them and told reporters that, as a result of the calls, they now felt confident that no American servicemen were implicated, 
and also that there were no links between the Townsend murder and any other crime. Jean's mother was interviewed by the Daily Mail and told the paper, I never really got over her death. The clairvoyant told me whoever did it was far away across water. But now it's nothing to me. I am not vindictive and I don't know why they should reopen the case. Despite the police announcement and the hints of fresh information, no further developments were reported and no arrests were made. I just sort of threw in the um, clairvoyant thing just to, you know, I feel like that's a very basic thing. Sounds like propaganda to me. It is. So, ev yeah, everyone thought that it was the Americans pretty much at the time because there was a uh, American base not too far away. To what? I'm intrigued as to what on the phone calls was said to make it yeah. so they were so positive that there was no Me too. involvement in the crimes. And yeah. if it's no link to yeah. any other crimes, does that mean the woman in Heathrow was not linked to the same case then? Quite possibly. Neither was um, Ellen Carden, according to them, or the um, assaults that happened before and after. I just so feel like the description... Like as we were like saying earlier, it could fit like pretty much anyone like in the military or whatever. What was that information where they were so sure they could confirm it wasn't connected, but not be able to like specifically charge a person? If that makes sense, you know. Yes, I w we will get into the theories in a moment. But for now, we're going to jump to 2005, which you think the case would be dead by then, but nope. In 2005, a former school friend of Jean's, Reg Hargrave, applied for access to the police case files. The request was refused and an appeal was heard. In its ruling, the tribunal dismissed the appeal and upheld an earlier decision to withhold the files from public inspection until 2031. A 50 year old case, still no access to the files until, I don't know, 10 more years, 11 more years. Nothing smells fishy. Yes. While in closed session, the tribunal was addressed by a senior Metropolitan Police detective who presented information which the tribunal later described in its ruling as specific to the Townsend case. This led them to conclude that whilst there was, no, there was nothing to suggest that the identification of the murderer was imminent, such a development was a possibility. The tribunal noted that a re-examination of the dead woman's clothing and other items had been undertaken in the 1990s by the Forensic Science Service. This had been done in the hope of identifying new DNA evidence that had produced, quote, nothing in value, end quote. The appellant advanced a theory that the killer was one Count Francesco Carlo Dallatri, an Italian nobleman of mixed English and Italian parentage, who had been living in London area at the time of the murder. In an interview with his former landlady, it had been alleged that the Count, who was known as Frank to his friends, was in the habit of travelling on the London Underground late at night looking at other passengers. This had reportedly attracted the attention of the police on at least one occasion. It was further alleged that the Count had unexpectedly and hurriedly left England for Italy very shortly after the murder, never to return. It was stated that there was a locked wardrobe in the Count's room in London, which, when his landlady and a colleague broke it open, was found to contain a USAF issue greatcoat. The coat had a button missing, and it was said that there had been rumours of such a button being discovered at the murder scene with some reports, even suggesting that one was found clutched in the victim's hand. The tribunal ruling made it clear that they felt there was no evidence to link the count to the case and that the police files contained no record of a button being recovered from the murder scene. They concluded the theories about any possible involvement on the part of the count were highly speculative. Which I kind of don't buy. <laughs> yeah, wait. <laughs> Where did this button thing come from? Here? There was um, one of the people who were assaulted uh, Pull the button off of, uh, um, off of the her attacker's coat. Yeah, I was gonna say it very well. He very well may have had nothing to do with Townsend's murder, but that doesn't mean he didn't assault the others. Because there was reports in the others with buttons, but there was never anything said about a button found with Townsend. I do believe that the count is guilty, but I don't believe he's guilty of Townsend's murder. Additionally, I'm still under the suspicion that um, the Americans. Yeah, Ellen Carlin was also seen with a man in a U.S. Air Force uniform. Yeah, a U.S. Air Force jacket, but they said that 
it was they had certain proof that there was no U.S. Air Force people involved, yet there were people seen with people with the U.S. Air Force stuff. Yes. I feel like the Count's definitely guilty of something. I just, I don't think it's her murder. Yeah. Um, it seems more like I, I they're trying to find a scapegoat the... in the Count, maybe. Yeah, I maybe think they just want to, like, save this kid well, because after all, he's in the U.S. Air Force, the USF. Yes. Well, be he wasn't. Well, first of all, he wasn't. He just had a coat. Secondly, the tribunal okay, said well. that it wasn't him because all the evidence linking it to him was highly speculative. Um, because it would make so much sense, but I guess the ruling also makes sense because there isn't like substantial evidence. It's just like yeah, speculation after all. Now, we will look at some theories. Well, more than the theories we've already covered. Um, so, the first obvious theory is that the uh, US Air Force was involved. Um, as as you'll remember, in Ellen Carlin's case, she was last seen with a man in US Air Force uniform. And also, a witness overheard two arguing voices after... Townsend's murder, one of which appeared to have an American accent. There's been a great theme of uh, American involvement in this case. In addition to this, there was uh, reluctance on the part of the USAF authorities to cooperate with the Metropolitan Police in the murder inquiry. Correspondence in the 1990s with the daughter of the principal investigating officer in the case revealed that the original Metropolitan Police inquiry team in 1954 did indeed express frustration at the apparent unwillingness of the USAF base commander at South Rooslip Air Station to permit his men to be interviewed. In addition, a retired detective who'd worked on the case suggested that the police had a pretty good idea of who was responsible, but were unable to gather sufficient evidence to make an arrest or bring charges. An informal review of the original 1954 autopsy report by a modern-day forensic pathologist supported the bulk of the original findings but noted that while the victim's underwear had been removed, her overgarments were relatively undisturbed. It was suggested that this could imply the possibility that Jean Townsend's death occurred as a result of a consensual sexual act that went wrong, or perhaps, more likely, an attempted rape that ended in murder. I think that's probably the biggest consensus theory. But now we're going to get into some other ones, and also one that I thought of. Dylan exclusive. Okay. Dylan exclusive. Dylan exclusive. It's a theory you won't find on the internet, except on this video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah, think I'm it so probably so. has been posited before, but I'm positing it myself. Shut, shut up. So <laughs> the other possible theory that has uh, ga gained some traction over recent years is uh, the Peter Manuel connection. Some of you may have heard of Peter Manuel. He was a nope. Scottish serial killer. Well, you wouldn't have, you were American. Peter Manuel... Oh, American, hey. <laughs> Peter Manuel was a Scottish serial killer. He was charged for seven murders overall, mostly in Scotland, but is widely suspected of several murders in England as well. Researchers are fairly certain that he was in a South Rooslip area for a brief period during the latter half of 1954, and many suggest that his presence in Rooslip around the time of Jean Townsend's killing is too much of a coincidence. Peter Manuel was born to Scottish parents in New York City. The family moved to Detroit, Michigan before migrating back to Scotland in 1932, this time to Birkenshaw, Lanarkshire. During his childhood, Manuel was bullied. By the age of 10, he was known to the local police as a petty thief. At the age of 16, he committed a string of sexual acts that resulted in his serving nine years in Peterhead Prison. In 1955, he successfully conducted his own defence on a rape charge at Airdrie Sheriff Court. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. He was convicted of seven murders. One case against him was thrown out of court. Another committed in, in England was attributed to him. Most of Manuel's victims were female, all within the same age range as Townsend. However, Townsend was not sexually abused, whereas in nearly all of these cases, the women were. In addition, there is not actually any evidence linking him to the case at all, except that he might have been in South Rooslip at the time of the murder. 
So this one's probably not true. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this one ain't it. Not only is there very, like, it's only the fact he might have been in the area that's linking him to it, but most serial killers, they have, like, a specific thing they do, if that makes sense, when they kill someone, like Jack the Ripper, you know, it was with the, it was with the guts and stuff. And did her killings match the rest of his killings? Not in the slightest. <laughs> so, then it's unlikely to be him, because a serial killer would sticks to their status quo when it comes to a particular they have a, they when have it comes a specific to murder. Motive. Yes, this is this yeah. is my consensus as well. Yeah, if he doesn't have any like previous connections or any reason to kill her, it probably wouldn't be him then. Because you yeah. know, you could probably do the exact same thing like yes. the guy down the road or whatever. It's a bit of a reach definitely. And now for my personal theory, a police cover up. I was looking through the papers and the information on this case, and a lot of it seemed quite inconsistent. That might have just been the sources I got it from, however, here is some information. Many of the press reports, just after the re-examination of the case in 1982, stated that Jean had been raped, contradicting the original reports from 1954. Additionally, you'll remember at the inquest, it is stated that there is no struggle However, I'm going to read uh, an extract from the original press article, the day after the murder. A workman discovered her body at about 7am in Long Grass, a few feet from the footpath on the junction of Angus Drive and Victoria Road. The grass was flattened as if there had either been a struggle or the girl's body had been dragged there. Additionally, I come back to the anonymous phone calls the police have reported. The content of the calls has never been revealed and the caller's identity remains unknown. They claimed that they knew for certain it wasn't an American soldier, but even the press reports see just about everything suggests that it was. They aren't releasing the um, police case files, and something there's definitely like something going on there. I I agree with I agree with the police cover up idea, but I don't think it's just police cover up. Yeah, I would agree. I, I it's definitely a mixture of the military covering it up and the police going along with the cover-up. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, so, the uh, base there at the time... Oh, I'm not entirely good with my uh, history, so this may be cut out as wrong, but I believe this was going on during the um, Cold War. 1954. Wait, what was this? 1954. Yeah, that was Cold War. Yeah, that's Cold War. Yeah. Yes, and uh, the... Uh, base there at the time was one of the only ones in the United Kingdom and was one of the only ones that had uh, tactical nukes. So it's fairly obvious that the police knew who did it from both the uh, previous detective and also the fact that they can tell you it wasn't a US Army man. But also, didn't yeah. they say they didn't had a suspect but there wasn't sufficient evidence? Yeah, that was what the detective said. Personally, I believe that the uh, reluctance on behalf of the um, American American Air Force is part of the reason they don't have enough evidence, and when they did get that e evidence, I imagine that due to it being in the middle of the Cold War and that being a uh, tactical nuke bunker, um, I imagine that it was sort of let go. <laughs> it is like uh, sad because it is probably a situation where they were either getting close to knowing who the uh, attacker was, or, you know, maybe they weren't even anywhere close, they just didn't want it to be- to find out that it was someone in the military, so that they just kind of swept the whole thing under the rug. Yeah, it, it does- it does very much seem that- that sort of idea. Um, yeah, that's- that's what I've been saying, like, like, ten minutes ago or something, because I was thinking, um, that maybe they just want to- keep up the image of the military or something. Additionally, this is a very interesting bit of information that I probably should have led with, but uh, the tribunal heard that whilst the case files were substantial, a number of items were missing. That is, items missing from the case file, because the tribunal gets to uh, look at the case files. Additionally, we can't see it until 2031. That is uh, very suspicious. Yes. I'm really curious to see what the case files are saying. 
It's like they're trying to hide something until like people forget about it. That seems the case. Because like we let's be honest, who would wait? <laughs> Alexa, set a timer for ten years. <laughs> I was scared you would actually set off my Alexa for a second. I did actually, I tried to press the mute button, but I didn't actually get it in time on my Alexa. <laughs> oh no. I, I think they're kind of banking on the hope that people are gonna forget about this by the time that it becomes public knowledge, because it seems like there's definitely something fishy going on with both the military and the police force. Yeah, yes. Just, uh... like, a cover-up can't be perfect, I guess, if they, like, have some consistencies in the case files themselves, there must be someone who can like see if there's something fishy going on, which is like it's already fishy as it is. So um, I also want to bring up the quick point that uh nineteen years later there was another murder. One Gloria Booth. She was murdered south of South Rooslip Station, whereas Jean was murdered north of it. And uh less than a mile away from each other, and under the same circumstances, a scarf being used to strangle her. This might not mean anything, but at the same time it does make me think that someone was stationed there. I mean, it could just be a copycat killer, because that too. someone saw- because I was, I was originally going to say, like, with even without going into the whole police cover-up theory, the, the fact that some of her clothes were removed and yet there was no evidence or anything of any sexual assault upon her body. That's a bit strange in the first place. And the fact she was strangled by a scarf made me think it was a a like it was an improvised. They had to they suddenly panicked to kill her. But like, if there was another the one nearby, yeah. And if but if there was another one within like a mile and it was done with a scarf as well, maybe the scarf thing's intentional. Yes, um, in fact, on with the uh, Gloria Booth murder, I think, I believe there was a, a same... Hold on. This is getting cut out, I need to read this. I forgot to highlight this. They were this. murdered by the same person, that gets rid of my theory that it was an accidental killing. Yeah, maybe, actually... maybe this person's just accident prone. I actually really <laughs> like that idea. <laughs> I really like that idea. It's a male prostitute that keeps murder. accidentally killing his, uh... Oh no. How does that one saying go? I'm trying to remember it. Uh, once is a chance, twice is a coincidence, third time is yeah. a pattern? So it's just a coincidence, until a third person dies the same way. Well, if this Gloria Booth is, is... Well, she did die the same way, that makes it free. So Wait, there is a murderer. What do you mean three? That's two, isn't it? No, there was Ellen, uh, uh, Ellen Carlin. Wait, she got killed by the scarf? She was strangled with her stockings. Not quite a scarf, uh, but... So, but like also, it was by a US Air Force person, most likely. Right. Although, interestingly... Or the Count. This is another point I wanted to bring up. The uh, description of Ellen Carla's murderer. Uh, 20, 22 to 24, 5 feet 8 or 9 inches, stocky build, flaxen hair, blue eyes. Baby face, clean shaven. It sounds very generalized. Yeah. It also, sounds it sounds like incredibly. Um, bear in mind, this woman is dead. It sounds very specific, even down to what he was wearing. Yeah. Which doesn't I... sound. So it sounds suspicious. Specific of a generalization. There's something definitely, there's something dodgy definitely going on here. Maybe just, maybe it's just incompetence, but might be something a bit more sinister. I still think it sounds like Peter Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I just want to know. Sounds like what every what white happened. father ever. <laughs> <laughs> so can I just double check something? The calls they were never released to the public, was it? No. It was just. They're part of the files. Yeah, they told them. There was no evidence of this. I don't think even the tribunal saw these. I don't think they were properly recorded. So it could just be that the military could have told the police force to stand down because they didn't like how the investigation was like leading towards military men, maybe? Quite possibly. Personally, my own idea is that there was a... Um, 
military man who had a very specific and dangerous fet fetish. And uh, he, you know, escaped, not escaped, the words. He left the uh, Air Force Base, killed people, and uh, got the current, the uh, head of the Air Force Base at the time to cover it up. I feel I. The count is also something quite interesting. That's probably a close second. I think what, I yeah, like... Dylan, what you said about the, uh, like the military cover up, that is 100% my belief. Yeah. The the count and the coat is kind of interesting though. Though I want to make I want to I want to preface that this was on TV. Uh, wait, was it? Hold on. I mean, if there was suspicious around, if there was suspicion around the count, the coat could have been planted if it was a cover. It was actually it was on it was on radio and it was by the landlady who just said this. They didn't have any evidence with this. The way they describe the Count makes him kind of sound like an already suspicious guy, so it kind of feels like they're trying to find a scapegoat. Yeah. Or like I could also not find any, um, any, uh, I couldn't find any uh, biography of this Count either. I was gonna say, do you have any, like, description of what the Count looks like? No. Also, like this bit now. of evidence I actually forgot to tell you. <laughs> um, this is to back up my theory. Um, it was reported that several young women had been murdered in West German Germany in similar circumstances to the, in the early 1950s, with their bodies left by the side of the German... How do you say this, Koi? Autobahnen? Autobahnen. Yep. Uh, <laughs> suggestions that <laughs> US servicemen stationed in Germany might have been responsible prompted the... Metropolitan Police to liaise with their German counterparts. But the idea of a possible link appears to have been quickly discounted. By the, German, by the American Air Force. Well, by the uh, Metropolitan Police. I gotta agree yeah, with you. But... I, I think it was like military and police sort of working together, or maybe just military straight up town. Yeah, I mean, again, because it was, it was in the middle of the Cold War, they wouldn't want, they wouldn't want press at the American Air Force Base in England, because that was the only base they had in Europe, which was, was supplied with tactical nukes, I believe. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. want people yeah. to find out that there's like a serial killer in your military. Yes. Like, with all the evidence that has been made available to us, it's it, it points, like, there's so many specific things, like, so many, like, the specific descriptions and the pure coincidence, or whatever you want to call it, that there was a jacket, a US Air Force jacket, with a button popped off in the counts. Yeah, just some, box. like, that seems massively like a scapegoat. It really yeah. does, and I feel like, and then the calls, and then not releasing anything, not releasing the case files to the public until 2031, it's... it's and a 50-year-old case, 2031, that's yeah, like mean, several that, years... It's 70 years already, I think you said, didn't you? Yeah, it's been, it's been 60, 70, 70 years, and it will be, the case files are hidden until, for 80 years, 81 years. Maybe. It purposely feels like they're trying to lead you to come to the conclusion like the count did it and that they've like they're just some mass evil mastermind that have escaped the country and will never be found but it <laughs> yeah. feels like they're hiding everything else. Yes. The only other information I have on this count <laughs> The only other information I have on this count also comes from the same source. Um Hold on. I've got a lot of paper here and I've got a lot to shuffle through. I should probably get like I mean, a big board and ping it all was? up. Count Francesco Carlo Della, 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 Count Francesco Carlo Delatri. Francesco Carlo. How do you spell the last name? D A L A T R I. Slower. D A D A L A T R I. And was okay. there any, like, physical evidence or, like, family members of the Count that they 
I couldn't find anything happen? of that. I couldn't find anything of that. Only the so landlady. So as far as we're aware, it could be that he doesn't even exist. Quite right, no possibly. The there. only the only like appendage onto this bit of information is. It was believed that he subsequently lived in Italy until his death in 1987. But then where did they find out he died if they don't have any um, evidence that... Yeah, believed. Like, that's that doesn't seem too certain for me. They, they guess. I think he died. I don't... Yeah, I couldn't find any, like, birth records. Oh, but I that's because died. it's him in another country. I'm, pr I'm oh pretty God. sure that he may have died on this exact date, but we can't be too sure. Yeah, baby. He died at this exact time in this exact place, but we're not too sure. <laughs> we couldn't have, we couldn't have found him like earlier. Just a white guess, I mean. So it turns out this guy only exists in this case. Yeah, that was what I found as well. It's a little suspicious. That is very suspicious. Definitely. The He's either a vampire or they're hiding something. Didn't, didn't you say <laughs> that the person who mentioned the theory of the Count was supposedly Townsend's friend or something? Uh, yes, she was her childhood uh, school schoolmate. Hmm, interesting. And yet there's no mention of a Count anywhere else in time except for this case. Yes. Hold on, I'm, I'm looking up to find this woman. I don't think this woman's name is actually in it. What if a woman killed her? And that's probably find, find the Freedom evidence. of Information request. Hold on. What, what about that theory? What, sorry? What if a woman killed her, and that's why they didn't find any evidence of intercourse? Possibly. But Maybe. Why? I don't know, because this if guy it, clearly doesn't exist anywhere. And this, it could also be exist, a cover-up to for the U.S. You know, the U.S. Armed Forces. I know. Offense. I'm just saying. <laughs> if this guy doesn't exist, someone had to make him up, and it came from the childhood friend uh, of the person. That's his name is Reg Hargrave. Wait, whose name? Um, the childhood friend. I am going to see if I can find the Freedom of Information request, just to make sure he's real. <laughs> Turns out this uh, no one in the case is real except for the victim. I I still can't get like Steve. out of my head what they're hiding still, or what would be so important that they can't release it into like twenty thirty one or whatever. I mean, yeah, the Cold War aspect. They don't want to. It have should that in it. absolutely have reached the point of being a cold case by now, even with uh, a proper style that. I hate that you. That was horrible. <laughs> I I also I have again. I have an what issue. Have? Yeah, that's I true. Anyway. I just uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Hold on. I had I just thought of something, but then it just went out of my mind. But yeah, even what when when did you say the second murdering of the same style was? Second murdering of the same style. There was nineteen yeah. years later. Yeah, nineteen years later. But also there was um. Hold on, where's my notes? Where are my notes? Uh, there was Maitland, who may have also been murdered by the same person. Hold on. I'm still trying to wrap my head around why they would. Basically, I know they don't blame the count. I know they don't like charge him or anything, but they do like heavily insist, like, oh, it could be this guy because he has a matching jacket and such, and he was in the same place. But if they did enough investigation to know those details about him, like his name and the jacket and how it matched up to him, why didn't they think to write anything down on like family or maybe whereabouts? Or why wouldn't they release that to the public? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like. Um, what you have, I don't know if we have this here, uh, but in America there's, um, what is it, the Statue of Limitations? Yes. What, how That's, long is uh, that on murder? <laughs> what kind of murder? <laughs> this murder. 
because it changes sure for this murder it's split. well let me look it up <laughs> i feel Wait, like on average that... once it becomes a cold case they normally go well we can't we have nothing um they give it a couple more years it's normally like a maximum of 50 years oh okay so murder has no time limit okay uh, it crimes, is 89 years that the cases are hidden to the public. So by that for anyone age 20, 21 and over. Probably not. Okay. Won't, won't be alive when these cases are open. Do you see what I'm getting at? <laughs> Do you see what I'm insinuating? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Glad you all got that. But no, this is a really interesting case. There's even uh, the space between Jean Townsend's murder and Gloria Booth's murder is now referred to as the murder mile, or the Rooslip murder mile, because it's a mile between their murders. So you can go do that walk. Um, fun walk with like the family. Walk. I kind of want to do that. Yeah, it's probably not that interesting. Also, there's oh, a church God. at one of their death points now, which is weird. Yeah. There was uh, also a theory, uh, I don't remember where this was and I don't have it on me, but there was a theory uh, put forward that the killer was actually impotent, hence why he wasn't, he was, he wanted to look but didn't have sexual interaction as such. There's a lot of different there's, factors in this Yeah, case. there's a lot of facts and there's a lot of twists, which is why I wanted to do this t case. Did you state before, Dylan, that there was uh, DNA evidence? Um, no, I said... Um, it's kind of why I think it could be a woman. Uh, again, this came from the police. Uh... Or if it is just to cover up, then there's really nothing we could do. So, like, what I mean was their DNA found at the ever ever scene, other than hers. Um, tri the tribunal noted that a re-examination of the dead woman's clothing and other items had been taken in the 1990s by the forensic science service. This had been done in the hope of identifying new DNA evidence, but had produced quote nothing of value unquote. I mean, 1990s would have been 40 years. Would the okay, wait. evidence, would any DNA still be? Yes, DNA things and yeah, DNA does uh, stay around for that long. But um, some DNA does, not all DNA. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so wait, say, like, it was nine. The case was 1954, right? Yes. The source I got in front of me, which is Wikipedia, says that like. Um, DNA profiling, also called DNA fingerprinting, was only used for like crime prosecution and like finding um, murderers as late as 1984. Yeah, so... that's 20 years off. 30 yeah, years so, after. Yeah, that's 20 years off. So maybe, maybe they didn't have, they didn't really know about <laughs> DNA at this point. <laughs> yeah, even Which... if they tried. It kind of brings the conclusion yeah. that, I mean, like, back then, police thought, like, you could take, like, a truth drug, which is obviously incorrect. So yeah. possibly, when they when they tested the DNA, there's a chance that there was just a fault in the system. Yeah, it was just not reliable. Quite possibly. I mean, again, this they actually tested the DNA in 1990s, okay. which is only 30 years ago. Jesus, 1990s was 30 years ago. <laughs> God, you're making me feel old. It just, there's so many like plot holes in this. There's a lot of iffy, iffy uh, information. I think if the case would be much more linear, if like the, um, I don't want to suggest anything, but if the like military didn't cover up a lot of things. <laughs> like, yeah. It seems, it seems very, it seems very confusing. To me, of course. I also yes. printed off a picture of. Um, both Gloria Booth and um, Townsend, but I couldn't find a picture of uh, Ellen, the other third murder. Could you? I don't know if she's us. related though. 
Uh, Ellen, I think she might be. Personally, because might be, but it's different. I just got my headphones caught. Ellen looks slightly different. I mean, if she wasn't wearing a scarf, how can you strangle her with a scarf? I mean, that's yeah. true. Maybe he was too like, far like, in it and was like, oh fuck, I need to find something to strangle her with. Yeah, I'm also- <laughs> I'm... Sounds very weird, but... <laughs> like, oh no, he... she doesn't have my calling card on her, I guess I'll just use the stockings. I, I, will, uh, sh I will read the original uh, article for you if you like. Um, yeah. Girl 28. Yeah, send the pictures. <laughs> oh yeah, pictures. They are both fairly good looking women. I couldn't find one for Ellen Carlin, again, I'll point out, but... um. Gloria yeah. Booth and uh, they are fairly good looking. I'm sending them now. I will put them on the screen for those watching. Actually doesn't put them on the screen like a boss. <laughs> Pranked. I think I will. <laughs> Again, they're not entirely good quality because they are in black and white, but... Um, and like 1954. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised this one even had a picture, to be fair. On the actual article, the other one I had to find online. My house was built. Four years before this. Maybe maybe there's a clue there. Uh, like, I, Hitler built my house. Like, he let it. He financed it. Oof. Okay, yeah, right. Girl 28, murdered in London, identified as Ellen Carlin of Derry. In a five minute hearing at Westminster's Coroner's Court yesterday, it was established that the woman found dead with a stocking round her neck at a flat at L Lilling at Lillington Street, Pim Pimlico. I can't say that Pimlico. Last Monday was Ellen Carlin, the 28 years old daughter of Miss James Carl Mr. James Carlin, 68 Rosville Street, London, Derry, and of the late Mrs. Carlin. The sea sister, Miss. I'll just skip this because it's not actually important. Uh, the inquest was adjourned. Wait, no. <laughs> police <laughs> wish. Oh, this isn't really that useful. The police wish to interview any taxi driver who picked up a man and woman in the West End of London late last Sunday night and took them to the Pimlico or Victoria district. They think that Ellen Carlin and a man went from Piccadilly to a flat in Pimlico about that time. Hmm. Yesterday, CID officers talked to a woman who may have been able to help them reconstruct the last evening in the life of Ellen Carlin. A number of men were interviewed at Chelsea Police Station and the police already issued a description of a man with a baby face whom they wish to interview. And then it just says the interview. Um, there is another bit that got cut off, and I will actually get the um, original article up so I can actually read it. Because I'm bad at printing, pretty much. Where are you? Imagine what? having a printer in 2020. You don't own a printer? <laughs> no, I do. Ah, here we go. Oh. I am a printer. For some reason, it gave me the whole, like, um,. <laughs> Gave me the whole, uh... I need called? more cyan. <laughs> Shut up. I need more cyanide. <laughs> okay, uh... Yeah, so he was believed to be in the forces, if you remember. Um... Uh, the officers of the US... Provost Marshall's department are cooperating with the CID and investigating the case. Which is interesting to me. Because they were for that one, but not for the next one. It's just so confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's a really interesting case. There's so many like choices they've made that is so questionable, but you can't really like completely understand, because of course they haven't released certain pieces of evidence in the public, so... Yeah, we'll redo it in 11 years' time. <laughs> <laughs> Our 11 year special. Yeah. Don't have a 10 year special, just have an 11 year special. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly! That's the point. So is this the outro, I meant the clapping, basically? But yeah. Oh, this will probably be over the outro. Hello, okay. outro people. Go follow our... 
places. We forgot to actually oh, yeah, introduce our plugins. Uh, oh. yeah, we should record the introductions. <laughs> okay, do you want to do that? that? And put it at the end. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I forgot about the introductions. Right, Which okay. Like this whole thing is the end card. Yeah, probably. <laughs> right, Koi, do your introduction. Oh my god, this comes out of nowhere. Okay, well, I'm Koi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm 17, turning 18 soon enough. I, I'm German, so please um, be nice to oh me. Oh my goodness, nobody cares. cares. <laughs> Nobody cares about you. Shut the fuck up. You're supposed go to just plug on... yourself. <laughs> go follow. Go follow me on why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't dot I actually on Instagram and um, gloomy x gay on Twitter. Thank you. I do mine now. Um, I am Dylan, also known as Archaic Pariah, and I am on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter. All under Archaic Pariah, and also Instagram, all under Archaic Pariah. So, follow me and catch the best. Okay, Bumbley, you go. <laughs> I didn't want this. Too bad. Can I, can I, can we, can we, can we, can just back, be he? Please? Can that just be he? Oh, I didn't want this, and then we'll leave it there. What? <laughs> <laughs> can we circle Crash. back to me? Hold on. Okay. They gotta know who Crash is. Crash. Say, Shut up, Crash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I, I am, uh, I'm, I'm Lega, but my friends call me Crash. Um, I'm, I, I'd like to say I'm one of the chaotic ones in the group, but I try to, I try to be sane most of the time. Um, you can, uh, basically just check me out on Instagram under Lega with three underscores, because someone stole the other ones. Um, and any other social medias you would want are uh, linked in the bio of Instagram. Thanks. He got to talk more than 10 seconds, no, no, but me. I didn't. Wow. Shut up. <laughs> Koi, no one cares. <laughs> Nobody cares, Koi. Koi, he has a full joke, like, no one cares. entire recording. <laughs> this is bullying. <laughs> okay, go, Nanami. This is your foreign. Uh, hi, I'm Nanami, in case you didn't know. No one cares. No, sorry. <laughs> we hate idea, foreigners. But I will, maybe. Uh, I gotta commit to it now. But, uh. Yeah. Wait, I didn't shout out on my TikTok. Wow. What? Shame. Nobody cares. I'll put it. I'll put <laughs> it in no the description. Okay, Petal, go. Uh. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Petal. Um, I don't have anything to plug, unlike these guys. I mean, I guess I got the Twitter, but <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, Bumble. Don't call me English. Don't call me English. Bumble, you go. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Can that just be it? Can that be the introduction? Sure, okay, Bumble we're done. Bumble was busy oh, writing, known as a little bitch. <laughs> we're done, okay, right, I'll stop recording. Three, two... Wait, 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 wait. Bumble, what case are you doing next week? Um, I'm doing John Wayne Gacy. Okay, join us, join us next week for the case on John Wayne Gacy.